talk about automation, okay? Automation, using automation inside of HoneyBook. Right now I'm hosting our Streamline Your Online Business with HoneyBook YouTube series. It's a five part series and this is video number four. And I can't leave the series obviously without talking about automation because this is one of those things that helps you to be able to go through and streamline your business. So I am going to walk you through how you can implement HoneyBook into your strategy of automating and streamlining your business. Now in video number one, I covered the foundational steps to help you to be able to go through and automate and streamline your business, no matter what tool or system that you use. So if you missed that video, definitely after watching this video, go back and watch that video because it is going to help you to come up with the processes that you need in order to be able to start automating your business. Because keep in mind that HoneyBook is a system. It is a tool, but it doesn't, it, it can only do and come up with what you come up with. Okay. So you do want to have your processes in place to have them on paper, I have them written down your step-by-step -step processes because this is going to help you to be able to use HoneyBook as the system, as the tool to help you implement the processes that you have because that is basically what streamlining is. So if you're not familiar with what I mean and I just give you an example. So like for example, if I have a website design business, right? So if I have a website design business, part of how I go through and streamline my website design business is that I use a HoneyBook contact form and I have that embedded on my website. When someone goes to our website, they submit that inquiry, that inquiry automatically puts that lead into my HoneyBook account. And then from there, they're getting an autoresponder email from us with the next steps. And then we have other like tasks that are also created from that particular lead inquiry. Now soon, because we are rebranding our company, we are probably gonna go back to what we used to do, which was send out a brochure that will have the service listings there and allow for them to choose those listings. And then once they choose their service offering to be presented with an actual calendar scheduler from HoneyBook to go through and book. But again, the processes that you come up with that is what's going to help you streamline and just simply using HoneyBook as that tool to be able to implement those processes. Okay. So that is a basic general example of how you can go through and what you're going to need to know in order to be able to streamline that process. So definitely that first video that I did lay down the foundational steps to kind of get your wheels turning about how you can go through and just streamline your business. Again, no matter what different, what tool you decide to use. So I'm going to hop inside of our HoneyBook account because I want to show you what what automation looks like and how you can go through and set this up for yourself. Okay, so right now I'm right inside of my HoneyBook accounts and to get to automations, you just need to go to tools and then you can go down to the section of automation. Now I want you to keep in mind just a couple of things. So right now, as you see on my screen, I have a few different automations that we have set up and some of them are lengthy as far as eight steps to some of them just have just one step processes, right? And I want you to keep in mind that I, I don't want you to overwhelm yourself to think that you have to have these long drawn out processes in order to be able to streamline. You absolutely don't have to have all of that. Even just sending an auto confirmation email or in, uh, sending a booking link automatically for someone to be able to book on your calendar, all of those things keep give you time back. It all allows for you to be able to streamline your business. The more lengthier that you get, it can be get more complicated. So it doesn't have to be all of that is basically what I'm saying. Okay. So we have some that are a little bit more lengthier. Some of them that just have one steps. We're currently rebranding our business and there's a couple of process things that we're going to be changing, like adding in brochures and questionnaires inside of this process. But again, don't get it overcomplicated. So as far as automation, now there's a couple things that I want you to realize or think about before automation. We talked about, I believe it was in video number two of the five things that you want to set up prior to one of the things prior to really dive in deep into HoneyBook. Okay. And this video is really to help you to be able to get streamlined, but also maximize your HoneyBook account and the way that you use HoneyBook, because there are so many different things 
and features that you can do and use to be able to really maximize your use to really have this system help you with your business and make it flow so much easier. Okay. So in video number two, I talked about the five different steps or items or task lists that I recommend that you do prior to doing anything else inside of there. And one of those things was setting up email templates. You're going to need to have your email templates set up prior to going through and doing automation. Those things are going to have to be set up. Prior to you activating this automation, you're going to need to have those set up because you're going to need it. So otherwise, if you're trying to set it up and you haven't set up your emails templates yet, you're going to have to add those email templates. It's going to have you to go through and do that. If you're trying to send something, let's say like a scheduler, right? If you're trying to have some type of if you're trying to have some type of schedule, for example, like you're trying to have someone book, you're going to need to set that up in advance. If you want to go through and send out, let's say like a brochure to someone, you're going to have to have that set up in advance. So anything that you're thinking that you're going to need to have during that process of your, uh, during your processes and set up your automation, you're going to need to have to set those up in advance. So that's number one. So make sure that if you're not sure what those five things are, I'm going to link video number two. I'm going to link that inside the description box below because you are going to need to go through and set those different things up. Okay. So going back inside of HoneyBook, what we have here is you have your automation name. I would recommend, especially if you believe that you're going to have several different automations. And even if you don't, I recommend that you go through and you name each one of your automations. And I'm going to show you how you can kind of start demoing, I'm going to demo this for you so you can kind of see how you can navigate your way. But you can also activate it by a lead form and you can activate it by contact form. Now we talked about lead forms. We talked about contact forms. I believe in video number three, I talked, we talked about how to go through and set those up. So under your leave forms, it's going to show all the leave forms that you have, whether they're live forms or they're drafts. Yeah, as you see, I have a couple of them in drafts. And if you want something in a lead form to go back to you, that automation that you have set up, you would simply just go through and just click that here. So in this particular example, with this particular automation that I have set up, if I wanted to have this assigned to this particular lead form, then that is what I go through and I check off. If you have a contact form, so everything that's under your contact forms are going to go through and show that there. Now with the contact forms, there's a couple different things. And the contact forms, it's also pulling in from those company settings that we talked about before with those project types. So these are all of our different project types. Now this particular one is blocked out because there's already this one here with the Black Friday website. This one is one of our Black Friday website deals that we have that we have a separate contact form that's already marked with that. So it's already, if you see down here, it's already listed and it's already assigned to a different form. So it is blocked out for us not to choose that. But any other company project types that we do have, I can go through and associate a particular automation or workflow with that particular project type. Okay. Now, in case that might be confusing to you. Again, you want to go back to video number two because I talk about the company settings and the different project types. Now, if it's not a type that's set, it can also just be set for a regular default contact form, which we already have that one selected as well, which is this one here. Okay. So I'm actually just going to click on this one because this is the current one that we're using. We're going to build it out a little bit more again, as we are going through and rebranding because I do need to add in some brochures and things of that nature. But right now we just have a simple a simple automation that is set up. So pretty much how this looks is that immediately after someone goes through, our contact form is embedded, embedded in our website and they automatically receive an email. So you have different options, action types that you can do. Like for example, you have send email, create a task, you can sit, submit and do a smart file brochure questionnaire. Well, this one is set to send an email and we automatically have this template, this email template that goes out to say, thank you for your inquiry. I can go through and I can preview exactly what that email is. So that's kind of how, like I mentioned previously, that you do need to have your emails already set up because that is where it's pulling from. If I wanted to change out this email template, I can click on it and I can choose from any of the email templates that I already have set up. 
I could also go through and create new, but again, it causes me to go through and create a new one. So if you don't previously have one set up, then even before you can hit save on this automation that you would go through and create a new template. You also have it when you wanted to go through and get it sent out. So with us, we have it where it's automatically required. It, it automatically is going to be activated upon the submission of that contact form. And then we simply just have a task created, which was basically for us to get this back within a day, create that task inside of HoneyBook for us to be able to go through and review the inquiry form and to send out the actual scheduling link. Now, the reason why we have done this right currently at this time, we had a more robust system. So if I were to go back out to this other one, we haven't built those brochures yet. So this one was send a brochure. We had sent an email. We had a task, another email, task, email, task, questionnaire. So we had a couple of things that were involved into this one. Again, because we are rebranded, we do have to go back and redo um, redo another brochure that we're, we're currently doing. So we will be going back to probably this eight-stepper, <laughs> but currently right now, that is what we have. So you can activate your automation by that lead form, by a contact form, or by manually going through and adding someone into your automation sequence, okay? So again, you don't want to go through and overcomplicate this particular process. Okay. This is, this is, this is implementing, you're taking HoneyBook and you're implementing the processes that you already have. So again, from video number one, we discussed is you want to think about your step-by-step -step process. What is it that people need to do? What process do they need to go through to be able to do various things to be able to work with you? So if they go to your website, they submit an inquiry, what happens next? When they do that, what do they get? What do they get an email? Do they need to book a call? Do they need to get an invoice? What is it that you need to happen next? After that happens, what happens next? So those are the type of things that you want to think about when you're going through and coming up with not your processes, because most of you may already have your processes in place. And if you don't, going back to video number one, again, may help you to go through and put those processes in place. But then once you have those processes in place, then you'll be able to go back and implement the automation. So starting a new automation from scratch is simply just by going through hitting that new automation. You're going to name that automation like we talked about before. Name everything. Name every single thing that you can inside of HoneyBook because that's going to help you to be able to find it quicker. And then you just go through and you go through and you start that first action. That first action is based upon whatever it is that you use. So did you use a lead form? Did you use a contact form? That's what's going to be based on. So after someone submits that lead form, what do you want them to do? That's going to be the first action. If someone comes from that contact form, what do you want them to do? That's going to be that first action. And you have different options. So you can send an email, you can create a task, which means it's a task for yourself. That way you don't miss what you need to do. So maybe they put in a contact form and you create a task for yourself to review the contact form. Or maybe you put in a task for yourself to, maybe it's depending on your business, it, it could be anything that you might need to do, right? You might need to create a task for yourself. Maybe you need to send them some type of file or smart file. A smart file is basically like a combined file that has a lot of different things. It may include like some questions. It may have some brochures. It may have an invoice. It may have a schedule. All of that could be combined inside of a smart file. So you pretty much just choose your first action, you choose the associated item. So if I'm doing an email, so I'm going to choose email and then you continue to build out your flow. You continue to hit that plus sign and build out your flow from there. And then of course you will go through and you will save that. Okay. Okay. So you go through, you continue to build out. So maybe I'm creating a task. I'm just going to put a test task and maybe that's all that I need to have in my automation sequence. I hit save and now I'm just going to put test up here. So I'll just put test, test. And now I have, oops, save. Now I have my automation built out, right? So if I go down, I can see the test. I can see it's two-stepper. And then we have, I mean, I associated to whatever I wanted to associate it with. So let's say I wanted to associate it with, again, to this. I'm going to actually put it to one that's actually draft. And now I have it attached onto this 90-minute session. So this 90-minute strategy session. So anytime I have someone come in that's actually come to my lead form, they got the link from my lead form, they put that information in, then they automatically 
this automatically triggers based off of that strategy session. And you can do the same for if you were to go over here to contact form. And if I were to say, okay, I need this to trigger anytime someone selects from my contact form, they select the project type of HoneyBook CRM, then they're going to get this, but this is going to happen based off of what I have selected. So again, in this particular one, we have it where it sends this email and then it does, and it's going to go through and it's going to create a task. So don't get overwhelmed with going through and using automation and streamlining your business using HoneyBook. It doesn't, it can be as simple as you want it to be, and it can be as complex as you want it to be. I'm going to show you a little bit more of a more complex way of using HoneyBook and integrating it with other tools that I use like Trillo. And to kind of help you to be able to understand that this system, again, is just a tool, a system that you can use to be able to implement. And using your HoneyBook account and using the features that are with inside of HoneyBook will allow you to be able to get a lot of time back that you don't necessarily have when you're going through and manually having to send an email out or manually having to do this back and forth about scheduling and things like that. So you don't have to go through and do that any longer. Definitely go through and use the automation feature that is available to you with inside of your HoneyBook account. So if you have any questions about streamlining your business using HoneyBook, or you have any questions about automation or any of the previous videos that we did using or talking about HoneyBook, leave those inside the comments. That way I can go through and answer those questions or maybe even do a video on those particular items that you guys have that way it can help you out and be able to help you to streamline your business. And I have a lot of resources in the description box below to help you streamline your online business, to be able to level up your business. So definitely check out those resources inside the description box below. And if you're thinking about giving HoneyBook a try, I do have 50% off of my first, I always say first, but off of your first, <laughs> I do have 50% off of your first year of HoneyBook. So go ahead and check that out. The link is going to be in the description box below. And if you missed any part of this Streamline Your Online Business with HoneyBook YouTube series, the link is going to be in the description box below for you to be able to go through and catch up, catch up because you don't want to miss out on any of the videos that we covered in this particular series. And we have video five that's going to be releasing next Thursday. So make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that video either. And I will see you guys again next week.